All right, so the first thing we need to do here is to create two new files. So let's expand the project folder. And at the main folder, right click and go to new source file and call it RGB underscore LED dot C and choose default C source. And now create a header file and call it RGB underscore LED dot H and choose default C header template. Okay, next we need to update the CMake list file and add the RGB LED source file. So be sure that it's the CMake list file here under main and add RGB underscore LED dot C. Okay, and save it. Okay, so now let's head over to the header file. So here in the header file, We'll define the RGB LED GPIOs, the number of RGB channels, the configuration structure, and the prototypes for the color statuses. So let's start by defining the RGB LED GPIOs. And we'll say define RGB LED red GPIO, and we'll use IO21. Now define the RGB LED green GPIO, as IO22. Okay, so now let's define the blue one. And we can use 23. So now here we can define the number of channels. So we'll say RGB LED color mix channels. And we'll say define RGB LED channel num. And we'll have three right, for red, green, and blue. Okay, so now let's define the configuration structure. We'll say RGB LED configuration, and we'll make it a type def struct, and we'll have here an int channel, int GPIO, an int mode, and timer index. So now let's call it LEDC info underscore T. Now copy this, and we can create an array with the same length as the number of channels. We could do that using RGB LED channel num. Okay, great. So now we need the prototypes for the color statuses. So the first one we can do is the color to indicate that the Wi-Fi application has started. So let's just make a comment here. Color to indicate Wi-Fi application started. And let's say void RGB LED Wi-Fi app started. And it takes no input parameters. OK? So the next one will be the color to indicate that the HTTP server has started. And we'll say void RGB LED HTTP server started. And this is void as well. And the last one is the color to indicate that the ESP32 is connected to an access point. And this will be void, RGB, LED, Wi-Fi connected. And it's void as well. All right, so that's it. So now we can move on to the implementation in the RGB LED C file. OK, so first let's include stdbool.h. And then also include the driver for ledc.h. And this is for our LEDC driver. And also include the RGB LED header file here as well. So first we need to create a function that initializes the RGB LED settings per channel, including the GPIO for each color, the mode, and the timer configuration. 
So this is going to be a static function, meaning it's restricted to this file and it returns void. Call it RGB LED PWM init and it's void. And then I'll here define a variable that we'll use to iterate through the RGB channels. And that can be an int, call it RGB underscore CH. And at this point, we can configure the RGB channel structures. Let's do the red first here. So it's LEDC underscore CH, which is the array that we created in the header file. So at the first position, update the channel. And from the LEDC driver, we'll use channel zero. All right, so choose channel zero. And let's Copy this, update the GPIO as RGB LED red GPIO, and set the mode here as high speed mode. And the timer is going to be timer zero. All right, so choose LEDC timer zero. We can now take care of the green channel. So for the green channel, this is going to be channel one. So update all the struct members to channel one. And that'll be LEDC channel one. And the GPIO should be green. So next let's update the blue channel. And this is the same story here. So update the channel for each structure member. The channel number as well should be channel two. The GPIO is blue. And at this point here, we can configure the timer. So configure timer zero. And we'll specify the LEDC timer config struct from the LEDC driver. All right, and call it LEDC underscore timer. And we'll update the first member, duty resolution, as LEDC timer 8 bits. And then now the frequency member here, 100 hertz should be fast enough. And for the speed mode, use LEDC high speed mode. And the timer number will be LEDC timer zero. All right, so that's all for the timer. And now we can call LEDC timer config, this one here, and then pass a reference to the structure. All right, so lastly, let's configure the channels based on the RGB channel settings that we've just done. So we'll grab this variable here, and we're going to use it to increment through the channels. So here we'll say configure channels, and say for the RGBCH variable equals zero. For RGB channels less than the total number of channels, We're going to increment through the channels. And here we need to update the LEDC channel config struct from the driver. And call it LEDC channel. And we're going to update the channel member using that increment variable, like so. And for the duty, we can leave it as zero. And for the H point member, we can make that zero as well. And next, we can update the GPIO number using our settings and the increment variable. And the interrupt type should be disabled which we can take from the driver. Interrupt disable. Okay, and for the speed mode, we could take that from our settings as well, using the RGB channel variable. 
Also for timer select, this can be updating using our settings above from the timer index. Okay, great. So now we can call the LEDC channel config function and then pass a reference to the struct. This will be done for each iteration through the loop. And next takes care of our PWM RGB channels initialization. So next we'll take care of the set color function. So let's make a comment here. Sets the RGB color. All right, so here say static, void, RGB, LED, set color. And that's a uint8 type for the red and also for the green and blue channels as well. So here we specified the input type as uint8 because we've specified the duty resolution as 8 bits. Therefore, the duty cycle values can range from 0 to 255. All right, so let's make a comment here. Value should be 0 to 255 for an 8-bit number. And we'll use the LEDC set duty function from the driver. And for the speed, pass our LEDC channel 0 for the speed mode and the LEDC channel 0 as the channel, and this is the red channel. Okay, so now call LEDC update duty from the driver. And for the speed, it's again LEDC channel zero and LEDC channel zero for the channel as well. Okay, so just copy these two lines and we can take care of channel one as well and just update the color parameter as green, and then the channel as one. So now do the same for the blue channel. Change this to channel two. And now this is for blue. Okay, so that's our RGB set color function. Now let's create the status colors that we'll use in the application. So go to the header file and copy these prototypes and then paste them into the C file. Let's get rid of these comments as they are already in the header file, so we don't need them here. So for Wi-Fi started, we'll call our RGB LED PWM init function and then we'll set the color I mentioned in the intro video, and that is 255, 102, and 255. That's the magenta type color that I showed in the intro. And this function, we only need to call it once. So we need a global variable to indicate whether it's already been initialized. So we'll say handle for RGB LED PWM init, and say bool and call it g underscore pwm init handle and initialize it to false. And let's use this here and set it to true before the function is completed. All right, and then let's come back here and check if it hasn't been initialized. And if it hasn't, then we'll go ahead and initialize by calling the function. So copy the same and do this for the HTTP server started. And then update the color as you like. I'll use the yellowish color that I had shown previously. Again, set your Wi-Fi connected color. I'll use the bluish greenish colors I had previously shown. All 
All right. Yeah. So that's it. You can probably define some macros for these color values when you know what you want, just so you're not using these magic numbers as we're doing here. So for now, let's test these out in the main.c file. And to do that, we'll need to include the RGB LED.h file. And just put the status function here, say RGB LED Wi Fi app started, and change the delay to 1000 milliseconds. And then now we can put in the RGB LED HTTP server started, and then add another delay. And then we also want to test the RGB LED Wi Fi connected function. And we can include another delay here. So the colors should change at this interval. So now go ahead and build the project and just give it a minute. So once the build is complete, let's go flash the dev kit. And I've plugged mine into a different port, but that's not a problem. I can update it easily by coming up here and then changing the port for my rover kit. And then we can just hit flash again. All right, so now let's check out the RGB LED. Cool, so we have the Wi-Fi app started. Web server started and Wi-Fi connected status is all shining. So our status LEDs are good to go. In the next section, let's get Wi-Fi up and running. So I'll see you there.